Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Diane. Today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of March 17th through the 23rd. Today is Saturday, March 23rd. So this week was very busy. I had lots of trainings to do for work and I had to work or I had to take trainings um, an extra day. So yeah, <laughs> this week I'm not feeling too relaxed at the moment, but I did get through quite a bit. I have a lot of things to share with you as far as my reading and my yarny update, so we better get started. So, as I mentioned to you, our Monochrome Manga Club meeting was this past week. So we went to the meeting, we discussed our selections which were the selections that I finished for the week. So these were the selections that I read for the meeting. I just finished filming the Monochrome Manga Club series first impressions video. So in that video, I will go over ID Invaded Break Broken uh, Volume 1, art by Yuki Kodama, original story by Otato Maijo, The Detectives United, uh, published by Yam Press, rated older teen. And I will also tell you my thoughts about Volume 1 of Island in the Puddle by Kei Sanbei, which is published by Kodansha Rated Older Team. So I won't be telling you my thoughts on these volumes, but I will tell you that I rated both of these four stars. I also touched a little bit on my thoughts on Volume 1 of Delicious and Dungeon by Ryoko Kui. Uh, this one's published by Yen Press Rated Team. So this is the start of our new series read for the Monochrome Manga Club. So we read volumes one and two. I will touch a little bit upon uh, my thoughts on this one as well, because I did not really talk about volume two uh, as much in that video. But um, this is a story about a group of adventurers. And at the beginning of uh, volume one, there is a page that tells you what happened in the world and basically there were these catacombs and it collapsed and underneath was a country and it was like cursed by this like magician and so when they were clearing the debris they found this old man who happened to be the ruler of this country and he said that whoever is able to defeat the magician will inherit like his kingdom. And so you have these groups of adventurers that are trying to go into these dungeons and kill the magician. And uh, we're following this group here on the, the cover here who have lost uh, one of their members. The member is this uh, guy's sister and she was taken by a red dragon. And so they're trying to go into the dungeons and find the red dragon to retrieve the sister. But they have lost all of their food supplies they're broke and so they decide that in order to sustain themselves they're going to eat the monsters in the dungeon so it's kind of a culinary type of venture where they're learning about what monsters can be eaten how to prepare them and things like that they meet a dwarf named senchi who ends up joining them who has a lot more experience with cooking the monsters in the dungeon and so we just follow them going through the dungeon, uh, meeting all the different monsters, learning about their races and things like that. Volume 1 was not as good as Volume 2 for me. Volume 2 for me definitely changed my mind about this series. After the first volume of the series, I was prepared to DNF. <laughs> I knew I couldn't because I am, you know, the host of the Monochrome Manga Club. And this was our new series read. Um, it was suggested by one of my members. And the way that they talked about it made it sound so interesting. The series wasn't ever one that I thought, okay, I'm going to like get into that or even try it out. It wasn't even one where I was like, yeah, I need to check into that later. No, this was never one of the series that I put on any of my list to check out. And so I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And after reading volume one, I'm like, what did you get me into? Like, I, I don't know if it's just all of the stress that I'm going through right now with my job or, you know, the fact that all of that is so like exhausting and I'm just really tired. But when I read volume one, I fell asleep five times, 
which is usually not a good sign because that means that there's nothing in the story that's grabbing me. I'm not intrigued by anything and it basically allows me to fall asleep. I mean, you know what I mean? And so um, I was very, very concerned after reading the first volume that this was just going to be an entire series worth of volumes that I wasn't going to enjoy. But I'm happy to say that volume two was so much better. I even laughed out loud during volume two. Um, I think just volume one is just really tedious. I think there's a lot of tediousness because you're learning about the world. You're meeting all of the characters. You're seeing the characters learn about, you know, cooking these monsters. And it's a lot of, like, things that aren't really interesting. But in Volume 2, that definitely changes. You still learn about monsters. You're meeting other races within the dungeon. But there's more of a, like, story, I guess. There are things about these characters that you're following that you're starting to learn. They're starting to feel more like people you want to know about. You're interested in what they're doing. You're kind of rooting for them, you know, and also, you know, learning about how to cook certain monsters, what's edible, what's not. Uh, and they give you like the actual like recipes for things that they're cooking. Not that you would test them out in the real world, but it's very much like how things are laid out in what did you eat yesterday? Um, that is a BL contemporary story by Fumi Yoshinaga. Um, you've heard me talk about it. I usually read a few volumes during the Manga Pride Readathon. And so, yeah, it's a story that I really enjoy. But in there, you're following a gay couple. And one of them is really into cooking. And, you know, the whole series about is about how food kind of brings together people. So you see a lot of them sitting around the table and talking you see how he decides to choose certain ingredients to cook and uh, things like that and how it kind of brings you know them to meet other people and things like that it's kind of like that here and now and what did you eat yesterday you also get the recipes but you would eat those these not so much but it's starting to feel a bit more like that because we're meeting other people. Obviously, Senshi has joined them. And so it's kind of already brought somebody to their team. And so Volume 2 was definitely much better than Volume 1. So now I'm actually looking forward to continuing with this one. But after Volume 1, I was ready to, like, stop reading. <laughs> if I would... If I had just read the first volume, like we chose it as a first in a series selection, I wouldn't have continued. I would not have continued at all because that's how uninteresting it was for me. But volume two definitely turned things around. And so I ended up giving volume one three stars and I gave volume two four stars. On top of that, we did also finish the two volumes of Assassination Classroom. Uh, volumes 5 and 6 by Yusei Matsui, published by Viz, rated older teen. We're reading this one on the Shonen Jump app. Uh, Daughter and I will be recording our thoughts sometime for the Volume by Volume podcast, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. Hopefully we'll have it out within the next week or two, uh, but with whatever's going on at the office, it will really, really depend on when I'm able to get that edited. And so, yeah, still enjoying the series. Um, I gave both of the volumes four stars, really looking forward to continuing. And so that's everything that I finished for the week. I was only able to finish that. I was really, really hoping that I'd be able to finish The Ghost or The Ghoul Next Door by Victoria Laurie. This is the eighth book in the Ghost Hunter Mystery series. I was not able to do that. I just didn't have any additional time at the end of the night after reading the Monochrome Manga Club selections. I did progress, though, a little bit more um, in this series. But you can tell how tired I have been this week because I did not stop at the end of a chapter, which is what I like to do. And I only ever stop in the middle of a chapter 
when I am exhausted and can't keep my eyes open any longer. And so, yeah. Um, I am on chapter 11, pretty much in the middle of the chapter. So I'm on page 219. So I've got a little bit more to go. I have been reading this one physically um, over the last couple of days. Uh, I probably will read physically tonight and tomorrow. And maybe I'll finish before Monday. If not, I will continue with the audio on this um, for the remainder of the book and finish it up on Monday. But this will definitely be done next week. So next week is the last week of March Mystery Madness. And I am not doing really well. Like two books I've read count for March Mystery Madness. Uh, two volumes of manga count for March Mystery Madness. Uh, and then when I finish this, it'll be March Mystery Madness. I'm hoping to finish Deja Dead, the first book in the Temperance Brennan series by Kathy Reichs, before the end of the month. But I am not sh even sure that I'll be able to do that. So, yeah, this March Mystery Madness... My progress has not been great, but I have to believe that it's because of everything that I have going on at work at the moment and the fact that the two books that I started with for March Mystery Madness were not so good. So yeah, that's kind of where my reading is at. I'm hoping to end the month on a high note. So We'll see what happens over the next week or so, but that's everything I've got for reading. Now, I was intending on filming my TBR game yesterday because I did actually have to work yesterday. I'm normally off um, on Fridays, but because of the training that we were required to do, I had to get on and take that training. And then there was a Q&A se session um, really late in the afternoon on any questions that we had, but it kind of wasn't worth it because they only gave us a half an hour and there are some questions that will take half an hour <laughs> to explain. Like, I don't know, it just, it seemed like a waste of time that half an hour, but in any case, I had to get on, right, and do it. And so in between then I had free time. So I had a three and a half hour class in the morning I had free time until about 4.30. Uh, so from noon to 4.30, I had free time. And I just played a video game. I'm not even going to lie. I played a video game because I don't get a lot of video game time um, during the week or the weekends anymore. Uh, I do a lot of editing and filming on the weekends. And so video game time, I basically get like 20 minutes a day if I'm lucky outside of lunch breaks. That's why I play video games during my lunch break, so that I can get some video game time. So provided I get a full lunch break, then I get an hour's worth of gameplay. But this month, I've gotten like a half an hour lunch break, if not a 15 minute lunch break. I haven't been getting my full lunch breaks because of everything that's going on. So that's kind of really worrying on me. But back to the <laughs> TBR game. Um, I know I touched on this last week that I'm not sure that my TBR game is serving me at the moment. And I'm really thinking about maybe skipping my TBR game in the month of April, which is kind of unfortunate because it would be the third, I think, anniversary of my TBR game. Um, yeah, I think it's my third anniversary. But I kind of feel like the selections that my TBR game has picked for me have caused kind of my unenjoyment of reading at the moment, if you know what I mean. Um, I still have one book on there for my TBR game for the month that I really don't want to read <laughs> at the moment. I'm just not feeling it. And it's not that I'm not feeling ever reading that installment. I do want to read that series. But I'm just not feeling it right now. And so I'm kind of thinking of skipping my TBR game for April. The other thing that I could do is play as I go. So not require myself to do three pulls. Like just do them as I feel. 
I don't know. I don't know. Because I also have the Aurelia Magical Readathon that I will be participating in in April. And I have a set of prompts for that, which I haven't worked out yet because I just have too much other stuff going on at the moment. My semester for the Aurelia Magical Readathon might have to take a delay because I am just not dealing very well with the stress. And so, yeah, I'm just trying to basically get through the day every day. And it's not too enjoyable, if I'm honest. Um, you know, it's a lot of grind and not a lot of happiness um, or enjoyment at the moment. This coming week, though, I really do uh, want to try to get some enjoyment. <laughs> so we'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the video. But yeah, if you absolutely want to see me play my TBR game in April, let me know down in the comments below. Or uh, what would you think if I played as I go? I have a different deck that I would play with. I thought about how to change my TBR game into something that I would play as I go. That way I wouldn't have to like really worry about the setup or anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, I thought maybe I'd try that out. And I don't know, like I said, at this point, I don't even know that my TBR game is doing something positive for me at the moment. Whereas when I created it, it definitely was. Uh, but now not so much. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on all of that down in the comments below. But anyway, I think it's time for another Yarny update. So I have quite a few projects to share with you, actually. <laughs> I have one finished item and three works in progress. And so let's get the finished item out of the way first. I finished my rainbow ring. So normally I would be wearing my finished object, but because we're doing Dress to the Nines for March Mystery Madness, um, I wore this sparkly dress instead. Uh, but... I will be wearing it hopefully in an April video uh, because hopefully it won't be too hot by then. <laughs> but a rainbow ring is done. I have tried it on. It fits great. The length is awesome. It is so squishy. Uh, so I've got one sleeve and I've got two sleeves and body done. I have not blocked this, uh, but progress. So... I was here when I talked to you last, I think. I think. Did I move it? I can't remember. Maybe not. I might have been here. I don't remember. So I was here. <laughs> and then we're here now. So, yes. Very, very happy. Like I said, I did try it on. Um, and it fits great. The only, like, concern that I have is that this yoke is much longer than like where I would need the sleeve separation. It doesn't look like bad, but where the sleeve separation is and where my underarm is where when I'm wearing this is like inches different. So that's why the arm part looks so short. Um, so when I was wearing it, uh, to look at the fit and things like that in the mirror. Um, you only really notice how low the underarm sits if I lift up my arm. So it's not noticeable if I'm just like, you know, walking around normally. Um, but that's kind of my only like kind of weird thing with this one. So I think the next time I would definitely like either... Choose a smaller size because I think I could go down one more size. There is a lot of room in this for me. So I could go down one more size or I could just not do as many yoke increases because the yoke is pretty deep. Um, much, much more than I would normally wear. But again, it's not something that would bother me at all. It was very comfortable when I had it on very squishy um and so yeah let me show you the back again because i did not do anything special with uh the the beginning of rounds so you can kind of see that there are jogs there i don't mind 
I don't mind that at all. To me, it doesn't bother me that much. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't bother me that much. I have seen people like do techniques and things to try to stop that line in the back. Uh, there was even somebody that ran a seam down the back uh, because they, it bothered them so much. But I, I'm, I'm not really bothered. It doesn't look that bad to me. I don't know. Plus, it's the back. I mean, you know, it's still an impressive sweater, I think. But I'm sure you're all wondering how I managed my ends. So let me share that with you. So the fact of the matter is that I did not manage my ends. <laughs> so Stephen West has this technique when he does shawls and things. It's called the Weaving Stephen. Um, I've been doing something like that since I first started knitting. Like before I even knew who Stephen West was, when I first started teaching myself how to do color work, that's kind of how I had learned how to weave in ends. Um, I know Earth Tones Girl also does the technique that I do when she does um, multicolored socks. Uh, and so I have seen other people use the technique I use. But basically it's a way to weave in your end as you're knitting. Um, and so that's what I did. I, I did that for everything on this sweater. So this is what it looks like inside. So let me try to get it a little bit better. You can see, uh, all of my ends here. What I will probably do. So you can see that this is where the beginning of round is. This is where I weaved it in that way. And then I weave this one in on this side. So what I will probably do is just shorten up these um, longer strands. And just leave it because they are woven in. Over, under, over, under, over, under type of thing. And so that's kind of what it looks like on the inside. I did more securely weave in these bottom ones just for like these last two rows because they're on the bottom um, and you can see that they are a little bit shorter um, because I did snip them a little bit but I need to go back in and chop some of these a little bit more um, just to kind of clean it up a little bit I don't want them to get all knotted or anything like that and so that's what the back looks like. And then the sleeve looks like that. So it's the same thing. I weaved over, under, over, under, over, under as I was knitting. And so, yeah, I will probably do the same with that. I will just go in and trim um, the yarns a little bit and just leave it. Again, I did weave in a little bit more securely just the last two rows um, just because it's the bottom. So yeah, that's how I dealt with that. <laughs> Again, I'm very happy with this sweater. It fits great. It's good length. It's a little bit more tunicky on me because it's a little bit longer than I normally would make my sweaters just because I needed to get in all of the colors from the advent calendar and so it's just slightly longer than what i would normally make for myself as far as a sweater goes but with is with this being a little bit more oversized uh, on me than again what i would normally make for myself it looks great a little bit longer and so, yeah, very comfortable, like I said. Lots of squish. This is the back. Um, lots of squish. It fits great. I think I will try uh, my next Stephen West sweater to be like one size down because this did end up being much more oversized. But I think the fact that this is my first 
male written pattern uh, helped a lot with like my fit issues because you know I am on the bigger side and a lot of times women written patterns are made to be a little bit more tailored a little bit you know smaller and I think a lot of my problem with fit has been the fact that you know they are a little bit more tailored they are a little bit smaller and I think doing a unisex size sweater is more uh, beneficial for the fit for my body and so yeah I'm very happy like I said the pattern is really easy to understand I had no problems at all um, really enjoyed knitting this it's super fun because you just have these little blips of color and you can choose your palette uh, the sample sweater that Steven made is in a rainbow, so he just repeats the rainbow colors all the way down. You could use an advent calendar like I did. Um, if you have one that's a fade, it would look awesome in this pattern, I think. And so, yeah, very, very happy with this. I think I've already scoped my next advent calendar pattern that I'm going to use from Steven West. And so, yeah. Provided I am able to get the advent calendar that I want this year, you will probably see me working on that at the end of the year. But very, very happy with this. And so, yeah, another finished object. Look at me go. <laughs> so um, details, like I said, Rainbow Ring by Stephen West. The yarn is the residence of the Haunted Mansion advent calendar from 2023 from fangirl fibers and all of the colors are were put in by the day that i opened them and so they are in day order i didn't do any finagling of any of the colors just whatever day it was i put it in and so yeah uh the gray is from yarn cafe creations it is in the gray smoke colorway and let me just show you I had four skeins of that and this is what I had left of my third skein so I did manage to finish the sweater with just three skeins I did wind up my fourth because I was not sure that I was going to be able to finish I thought for sure I would dig into this one but I ended up not touching this at all. So since it's already wound up, I will definitely be using these for my daughter's resident of the Haunted Mansion socks. Um, I have already figured out all the maths on whatever I need to do to get all of the colors in for her size of sock. So that will be a cast on sometime in the near future. And I'm really having a lot of fun like seeing how much stuff I'm going to be able to get out of this yarn advent calendar. It is the first one that I've actually finished something from, but it was also my most recent advent calendar. And so that's not a great sign. I think I have like three or four more advent calendars. You know, I started working on one of them, like my very first one, but I haven't gone back to it and I really need to. Um, but yeah, definitely a really, really fun pattern. Very happy with the finished object. And I'm looking forward to my next one. So that is the rainbow ring. Okay, the next project we're going to talk about is my mom's Harvest. Harvest is a pattern from Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern. I am knitting off their app. And I didn't put very much work into this this week. But I did do a little bit to help my yarn management. Um, this is my mom's Harvest. So right now I am just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the body. This is where I was the last time I talked to you and this is where I am now. Again, not too much work done on that. Uh, but we're moving along. My mom did finally tell me how long she wants the body to be from the underarm. So I need 20 inches, which is just a little bit more than uh, what I do for myself. So yes, we are chugging along. So because these front panels are this dark charcoal and the back panel is 
this like lighter gray there is a little bit of intarsia and so I have been working this out of Lion Brand's Pound of Love yarn which are like really huge skeins of yarn that it's baby yarn um and so I decided to wind it up into cakes so my yarn winder can only make cakes this big this is as big as it could go because it started to uh, hit the arm that feeds the yarn into the holder and so I've got one cake I've got two cakes and I have one cake attached to each side and then I have a third cake so the yarn because I was pulling from the inside and the outside of the skein was starting to get all t tangled together and so I really needed to like manage my yarn a little bit better so I decided to do that it did take a little bit of time because they were tangled so untangling all of that so that I could feed it into the yarn winder was a big mess <laughs> But we are good now. And so, yes, chugging along. And it's basically just, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So this is a good, like, mindless knitting type project. And, yeah, so I definitely want to make sure I put more work into this. Uh, but I do have two more projects to show you. <laughs> and I'm sure you're thinking two more. You only were supposed to have one more because I did introduce one of them uh, last week. So let me put this away and then we will get to that one. Okay, so my meeting sock. So I told you last week that I was having a lot of meetings this week, right? So I needed a sock because the meetings were like three and a half hours every day. And I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. So I did wind up another one of my anime yarn clubs from Hawari Bazaar. So this is Haikyuu in her uh, Nova sock, I think that's what she calls it. Haikyuu colorway and the mini uh, skein that goes for heels and toes. So this is a manga and anime based on a High school volleyball team done by Haruichi Furudate. And so I cast these on for you last week. And I finished my sock. So this is where I was when I talked to you last week. You can see that my stitch holder is a cat. And if you know Haikyuu, you know the significance of the cat. Uh, this is the only cat I had, so I couldn't do like a red one a red one would have been more appropriate but cat nonetheless so I was here when I talked to you last and I have finished the sock so I've done my normal recipe and this is going to be the same formula that I'll use for all of my anime yarn club sock sets at least for my my socks because I will do another set for my daughter that's why I do the sock sets so that I can do a sock set sock pair for me and a sock pair for my daughter so my socks will be 15 rows of one by one rib 45 rows of three by one broken rib a slip stitch heel square heel turn and then however long uh, for me i will let you know that i do 50 rows from the heel to the toe that's the perfect length for myself. So I do 50 rows of only three by one rib on the top side, uh, three by one broken rib. And then I do plain stockinette on the bottom. And then I do my lightning toe, which is just a rounded toe, but uh, you don't get that tab on the side of the toe. And so, yeah, that's what it looks like. Very, very happy with these. This one is striping very similar to the Demon Slayer socks, uh, but that's okay. I'm really, really happy with these. So I have one sock done. So I need to cast on and do the second sock before I let this one become a languishing whip. But I was able to finish one sock during my meeting. But yes, very happy with this. Looks great. And... Uh, 
I'm glad to have done at least one sock for the I Love Books and Sock Knitting Cal that's being hosted by Earth Tones Girl. So we'll see how far I get in my second sock, if I'm able to even finish it uh, before the month is over. I'm not sure how long the cowl is, but it would be nice to finish a pair of socks this month as well. Um, but yes, so that those are my high Q socks. I'm just calling them my high Q socks. All of the Anime Yarn Club socks, I'm just going by the uh, name of the Yarn Club. I'm not naming them any different, but yes, those are my high Q socks. And then I have one more work in progress to share with you. So you might have seen in my thumbnail that I have a new knitting bag. So this is a knitting bag that my mom made for me recently. You can see that the characters of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba are on the fabric. And so, yeah, got the fabric. She made me this bag. And then my daughter went to book off um, this past week. And she got me a Muichiro. I think this is supposed to be a phone uh, pull or something like that. A phone charm um, from the gotcha machine at the book off. And so I have this one to pull uh, the zipper on this bag. So in this bag is my daughter's second Pure Fuzz. So... Pure Fuzz was the sweater that I had made for my daughter. Did I finish it in February? I think I finished it in February. Um, she loves that sweater. She's worn it several times already. And so she asked me to make her another sweater. And so we've been talking about ideas and things. And there are definitely some like themed sweaters that she'd like to have but she really really likes the fit of the pure fuzz so we decided to go ahead and make her another pure fuzz this time though instead of doing one Aran weight yarn i am holding three yarns together to get the same kind of diameter of yarn so this pure fuzz is being done in knit picks palette so I've got Holly Berry here, I have Mist, and then we have uh, Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud in black. So we've got two fingering weight yarns and a uh, lace weight to give me an Aran kind of weight gauge. So the whole like theme behind these colors is she wanted a sweater that kind of was inspired by the colors of Fulgur Ovid, who is a Niji Sanji VTuber that we have been watching. And we've been watching him play the Dark Pictures anthology. So, like, uh, the games are called Until Dawn, um, Mount of Medan, uh, Little Hope, I think. It's one of them. And so we've just been watching him play those. We've been really enjoying watching him play those. And so she's like, I think I want a sweater inspired by his colors. And so, yeah, he has this color scheme, red. His hair is kind of this like silvery gray, white. Um, and he has black accents on his uh, clothing. And so I swatched this. This is what I had talked to you about last week where I told you I swatched something, but I didn't tell you what it was. <laughs> so it was for this. I actually got gauge perfect um, with these yarns for the Pure Fuzz, but she wanted it a little bit tighter. The fabric that we got out of the swatch was a little bit too uh, loose, not as structured as she would like. And so she asked if I could make it a little bit tighter. So I'm doing exactly what I did with her original Pure Fuzz, which was to tighten up my, my stitches by knitting English style instead of Continental. So I got gauge as Continental, exact gauge. And so 
I haven't actually measured my gauge yet on what I have knitted, but I know that it's going to be at least one stitch smaller than the gauge. So this might actually end up a little bit bigger because the gauge on the Pure Fuzz that she currently has is 17 stitches to 4 inches. And I think I might be getting 16 inches per 4 inches with this because when I had swatched the Pure Fuzz English, I had gotten 16 inches for four inches and then after uh, the product was done I got 17 inches so I'm thinking I'm getting 16 inches now stitches I mean 16 stitches so I have barely done any work on this right now and this particular pattern starts you at the neck and uh, you work back and forth until you join in the round and then you go and you put in your neckline afterwards. So this is going to look kind of weird because I don't have a lot of knitting on the needles at the moment. But this is basically what I have right now. Um, this is the neckline. <laughs> so you can see it's kind of really big, but it does. you do tighten it up as you pick up for stitches and stuff. What I will probably do is the same thing that I did when I did the Pure Fuzz the first time, which is to get to the sleeve separation, separate those off, and then go back and do the neckline, just to give this top part a little bit more structure, especially, you know, for me to be able to show you, because right now it's just, like, really floppy, and there's not a lot of fabric. But, yeah, this these are the two shoulders, so that's kind of where we're at right now. The marl looks really nice. So I can show you what that looks like. You can see a lot of red and a lot of gray. And then there's just those little hints of black from the alpaca cloud. So yes, and this fabric is much, much more um, structured. And so we were kind of like feeling it. And she's very happy with how it feels. She's like, oh, this is definitely, you know, going to be a, a different sweater than what she has. Because the Wonder Fluff that her current Pure Fuzz is worked out of is very light. It's very airy. But it's also alpaca. So it's still warm. But the feel of the sweater is very different. That feels very, you know, like nothing, whereas this one is definitely substantial. And so you can definitely feel that there's a nice thick layer of fabric here. And yeah, so far so good. So I really, really am enjoying this one still. Uh, this is a very, very enjoyable pattern to work. And so, yeah, I just... Um, joined in the round in the front and I've only got like a couple of rows there so I've got my mini mouse uh, needle hole uh, protectors from stitching the high notes over Christmas time she was offering these in this in their store so when I picked up my nutcracker bag I also picked these up and then um, I have my homemade row counter <laughs> so I just have some of these like safety pin type holders and then I have these uh, stitch markers and so my my set is rainbow colored so I've got one uh, color of the rainbow and then I've got white and black so right now I'm just doing a bunch of increased sections so I'm trying to count those out and I just put those as my beginning of round marker so every time I finish a repeat, I change. So my next repeat is done, I'll move it up here. And then the other one just kind of dangles. So that's kind of how I'm keeping track of my increase rounds and how many I need to do. And so, yeah, so maybe I'll be able to get to the sleeve separation this week, but so far, I'm just really, really enjoying like seeing how the yarn is marling because I think it's really interesting. I also have plans for a marled uh, kind of iron weight sweater, but I think I am going to do a dopio for myself. 
uh, the Dopio is another pattern by a Korean designer. It's very popular. I've seen a few people that I've started watching on the knitting podcasts talk about doing Dopios. And so I'm definitely intrigued with the Dopio. And I think I am going to go ahead and do a Dopio for myself. And that one you do hold two fingering weight yarns and a lace weight or a mohair together to get the gauge. Um, I had asked my daughter if she had wanted the Dopio instead of the Pure Fuzz. And she said that she wanted the Pure Fuzz. So, you know, same pattern, but it's going to look very different. So I'm very interested to see what this is going to look like as a finished item. And I hope that when we wash this, the red doesn't bleed all over the silver. Because <laughs> I know Knit Picks red does tend to bleed, but we do have color catchers. And so hopefully that will take care of it. But yeah, we'll definitely need to keep an eye on this one for a bit while I am blocking it. But so far, I'm really, really happy with how that looks. Daughter likes it a lot. And so, yeah, we'll see how far I'm able to get on this this week. And that is all of my knitting projects at the moment. So... I have gotten quite a bit done this week, I would say. I finished a project. I put in a little bit of work on a work in progress. I finished a whole sock. So I have finished item. And then I started a new project. So even though it's been like really stressful, I feel like as far as my knitting goes, I got a lot pr produced. And so, yeah, that's all of the Yarny update. Well, kind of. I do have a yarny acquisition. Uh, my Kindred Spirits Yarn Club came in this week. And so that is a yarn club that is done by Little Skein and the Big Bull. Um, I've been part of this yarn club for a really long time. Several years. And it's an Anne of Green Gables inspired yarn club. So... With the yarn every other month, because it's a bi-monthly yarn club, we get a thank you card. And it just says a little bit about her and the yarn subscriptions on the back. And then we get a little card that explains the month's colorway. And so this month's colorway is called Apple Blossom and Minuet in Peach. So it's a February, March skein, 2024. And it says, I dye your yarn in my outdoor dye kitchen next to plum trees in my backyard. Each year they flower in February and I am filled with the feeling of spring. Blossoms, soft purple leaves, and pink blossoms emerging from their buds. This feeling is what I had hoped to capture for you. A fresh start, tender feelings, and awakening from the cold. Most of you are receiving apple blossom, which is a dye recipe I created several years ago. Longtime club members are receiving its companion color, Minuet and Peach, which is a brighter sister colorway, like a ripening peach, named for the gorgeous peach dress Anne wears in the CBS, PBS, Anne of Avonlea series. I hope you love it as much as I do. So because I am a longtime yarn uh, subscription member, I did get the Minuet and Peach. So here it is. Now... I am not sure about the CBS PBS uh, version of Anne of Avonlea. Um, as far as I'm aware, the one that I'm familiar with, which is the Sullivan Entertainment version, was not shown on PBS when it first aired. I'm pretty sure it was on the Disney Channel, but it was a really long time ago. Um, the one that I'm talking about is the one with Megan Follows. That is like the Anne of Green Gables miniseries for me. I have dabbled in watching others, but it just doesn't hold the same feeling for me. I can't like not watch the one that I really want to watch. And so I'm not familiar with a peach dress that Anne wears in the miniseries that I'm familiar with. So I'm wondering if this is one of the other ones, one of the more uh, current series. 
because the one that I'm familiar with is one from back in the 80s. But yes, still really, really peachy <laughs> colorway. I'm going to have to look in my uh, collection to see if I have that apple blossom recipe or apple blossom skein. I think I do. It might be nice to pair them together since she says they're uh, sister colorways. Um, but yeah, very happy with this. This is on a cashmere blend. All of the Anne of uh, Kindred Spirits colorways are on cashmere blends now. For a while, we could get them on the regular uh, merino and nylon base, but she switched to this cashmere blend, I think, last year. Um, for all club colorways, and so this is 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon for 120 yards, 115 grams. So it says colorway minuet in peach, inspired by Anne of Green Gables, February, March 2024, Kindred Spirits. So, yes, very, very nice. There are some, and I'm not even sure that you're going to be able to see it, but there are some like really light, like lavender strands in there um and then you can see some of the speckles and it's obviously very tonal so yes very very happy with this yarn club like i said i've been a member of this yarn club for years and i just really collect a lot of the skeins i've only used like one or two of the skeins so far but i definitely have like plans on knitting some of these skeins into like shirts or sweaters um and so yeah i have a combination of the regular merino like sock base and now these new cashmere ones these are really really soft too and so yes lots of plans if you have a suggestion for like a t-shirt or a like faded fingering weight sweater let me know because like I said I have a lot of these single skeins and so I would have to pair them with other skeins in order to make something so whether that be uh, micro striping or fading um, I, that's the only real way that I could like use all of the skeins and I really would like to like try to use as many skeins as I can in one project you know because I know I have several like I have a set that's set aside that's like all types of pinks and I have a set set aside that's like more autumnal colorways and so I definitely have plans to do something with those that's why I put them together but I just don't have specific plans. So definitely we would be interested in like t-shirt uh, suggestions or like fingering weight sweaters that are faded. So let me know. But yes, very, very happy with this colorway and that yarn club. So I think that'll do it for me today. There is, There has been a lot, huh? The yarn section was pretty long just because I have so many projects definitely felt more like a yarn podcast uh, when I used to film those <laughs> not that this is very different from when I used to do yarny podcasts um, but I just you know talk about my books separately and now I'm just putting everything together and that seems to be more of the norm for like yarny podcasts nowadays which I'm really enjoying because it kind of helps open me up to uh, books that people outside of the booktube community are reading though a lot of people are reading the same stuff on the yarn side of youtube that booktube is reading so uh, there's a lot of crossover right now but every once in a while you know i do get that gem of that book that oh i've never heard anything about this let me go look it up and so i've been really enjoying the fact that Lots of yarn podcasters are starting to share their reads and what they think of them. And it just so happens that a lot of the yarny podcasters that I had already watched before have the same type of like reading taste that I do. So that is a definite plus. Lots of mystery reading. And so, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. 
And so, yeah, I, I told you that this coming week, I'm really going to try to alleviate some of that stress that I've been feeling. Um, I was just having a lot of chest pains this week. And I know it's not normal. I know it's a stress reaction for me. I'm just trying to like manage, you know, the stress because it is a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of change on the horizon and there's a lot to learn and it's overwhelming and there's not a lot of time to like get it all down. Do you know what I mean? So this week I definitely have plans to help like relieve, relieve some of that stress, right? So we are going to go see Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters movie, um, on Tuesday. So we're going to go after work. I think it's going to be really fun. I always enjoy a Ghostbusters movie. And obviously you've got that iconic Ghostbusters theme, right? And so I'm really looking forward to just kind of going out, stretching my legs, getting into a entertaining movie to take my mind off of what's going on at the office and yeah so that is pretty much the big thing that I'm going to be doing <laughs> during the week um, other than that I'm just going to be trying to knit a lot I'm just going to try to uh, settle into my reads hopefully like I said I'll end the month on a high note and be able to and them on some good reads, good reads, <laughs> uh, much better than where I started in the month anyway. And then I'll make a decision on my TBR game. Again, let me know if you really want to see the TBR game or if you want to see me try to play it as I go during the month. Um, that would really help me out. And I think that's all I have for today. So let me know down in the comments below what you've been up to this week. Have you crafted on anything? If so, let me know what you crafted on. How are you doing with your reads? Did you finish anything this week? If so, let me know what it was and did you enjoy it? How are you doing this month in general? Let me know. And if nothing else, and you'd just like to let me know that you were here, if you could leave me a peach emoji or any kind of like fruit type emoji down in the comments below that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that will do it for me today so i hope you're all doing great i hope you're all safe and healthy and until next time take care and smile always bye